Hello church family. I'm sitting out in front of my house and greeting you from Greenbrier. And so I thought I'd put some green stuff behind me. Happy Sabbath and I just wanted to start our time together by praying to the God of creation. Thank you God for giving us this day and for giving us the opportunity to be together on video. We are grateful for this in a time when we are separated one from another. May we enjoy this time with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, I wanted to talk with you today uh, about a subject that actually we don't like to talk about very often, and that is what happens after you die. Uh, it is so amazing to me that we don't talk about this very often, and, and that is because I think maybe we think, oh, uh, I'll, just, I'll just deal with it when... The time comes. Well, the fact is that with COVID-19 killing so many people and us being separated from one another to keep that from happening, I think that a lot of people are thinking about their their mortality. They're thinking about what's going to happen uh, as they enjoy this life and whether or not there is an eternity uh, where they will be able to enjoy uh, an afterlife. So uh, I think in our series we need to be discussing this uh, very, de very definitely right now uh, so that as, as people are dealing with the mortality that we are seeing around us, we can have some good things to say, some comforting things to say, uh, rather than uh, just believing that, oh, it's terrible what everybody else believes. So um, let's divide this time up into, into three different areas. Um, I'm going to divide it up into how we're similar, um, how we're different, and thirdly, what does it matter that we are uh, different in the way that we think about this than actually most of our Christian brethren and sisterin around the world. So first of all, uh, how are we the same? Well, I think we're the same in that we believe that we're going to die and that death is part of this current existence of humanity and that uh, we should not be afraid to admit that. Um, First Thessalonians tells us that when we grieve, we don't grieve as others grieve. That's true. However, we still believe that we're going to die. Uh, the difference for us, though, according to uh, Psalm 23, is that we do not fear. So I'm going to say that Christians in general believe that uh, we should not fear, but that we should believe in the God who promises eternal life. Um, I think that we believe Jesus when he says, if I've made it through, you're going to make it through as well. We talked about that a little bit yesterday in John 14, and uh, I just wanted to reiterate that right now, that Jesus came and I believe that his main message was that we were going to live again and that he was going to prepare a place for us. So in general, I think in Christianity, people believe these kinds of things. But how are we different? Uh, you know, when, when people have me do funerals and so on, uh, they often want me to emphasize the fact that, you know, their dearly departed is not gone somewhere, but that has now gone into the ground and is waiting there for Jesus to resurrect them, which is our general belief. We would generally be called soul sleepers. Well, um, yes, uh, if you go to Genesis, you see that a soul is the result of a body plus the breath of God. If you look at the way that Adam was made, that's the way that we believe things happened. And, and so uh, do the opposite and take breath away back to God and you have a body and you don't have a being that's gone somewhere else. Uh, this is what we believe, this is different, and it is based upon our understanding of Scripture. But what Scripture also does is it gives us a picture of God. And 
I think that that's an important differentiation that I believe we have as opposed to what others who accept that there is a a, a person in a soul-like condition that is elsewhere. If we believe that God would have us know that, then that also tells us something about how people believe about God. And, And personally, and I think also based on scripture, we just don't see a God who is interested in people uh, being in pain forever and ever. I think he sent Jesus into this world to make an end to that and to tell us about himself. Remember when the disciples asked him to show them the Father, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the whole effort on the part of God to communicate his uh, idea of himself to us as human beings through Jesus was to tell us that he loves us and that he wants us to come back with him and live with him and have life. That's that's the main thing that Jesus wanted to convey to us. And so um, I believe that, that the opposite of that is not life. It's uh, not going to be an existence anywhere outside of the life giver. So if we choose to believe in a God like that, then I believe that we are actually choosing to believe in the biblical God and not some made-up version. Maybe I could be so colloquial as to say a made-up version of who God is based upon what we want rather than what Scripture reveals. So if we go with Scripture, then uh, we have a, a picture of God that he has put forward through his prophets and through uh, Jesus and therefore uh, we have to we have to stay with that and that I think makes us different from individuals who just want to make things up uh, to comfort themselves in a certain way Um, lastly what does it matter well again I believe that our picture of God matters uh, because God has tried to reveal himself through Jesus particularly to the human race and if we don't accept that or if we try to manipulate that idea in any way um, I think we come up with the same conundrum that Eve was up against the same choice that she had to make which was do you believe in the God that presents himself as the creator God or do you want to make up your own okay so she chose to believe herself to believe the insinuation that God was not going to be uh, helpful and uh, I've got to hurry here they're doing the lawn down the street (laughs) the problem that I see though with this situation is that when we believe that there is uh, life after death uh, in the now, let's say, not at the second coming as scripture uh, reveals, that we make ourselves vulnerable uh, to the grooming of the evil one. This is a new term that has come into uh, our vocabulary because of people who want to do evil things with children and adults Uh, and so there is a a conditioning that takes place in order to uh, get those individuals to allow people to do evil things with them we call this grooming okay in a way you could say that believing that your loved ones go someplace else after death is a way to groom uh, humans to believe that they can still be in contact with these individuals just in another state in another way Uh, this makes us vulnerable to the contact by the evil one uh, to our loved ones and to ourselves if we believe this uh, idea that you go some other place when you die Um, this is tremendously difficult uh, to deal with and and 
people are often only thinking about the comfort they receive at this time. And that's where I think that it matters that we believe in the God who created us and who says, uh, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, you will wait in the ground until I resurrect you. I was your creator once. I can be your recreator and bring you out of the ground and give you a new body and take you to heaven to be with me forever. <laughs> that, that to me is, is wonderful and fantastic. Uh, others feel that it isn't very comforting because they don't have their loved ones around to be able to communicate with them. It takes the focus in many respects off of God and onto ourselves and what we want rather than what he wants. And this is also uh, very disturbing. So we have a real possibility as we're dealing with various people to give them real comfort, to remind them of what John 14 says that Jesus wants to be with us and he wants to bring us to where he is. He wants to uh, bring us back to this home that he is creating for us where he says that there is space for every human being on planet Earth. Please know that uh, at times of difficulty and also in times of calm, we need to be talking about the fact that this very subject is what the good news is all about. The good news is we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear because we believe we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. If, if you hold that as a dear belief in your life, if you believe that Jesus has saved you with, with his uh, life being uh, given on your behalf, then you are experiencing the first part of your eternal life. And believing that, let us uh, encourage one another uh, that even though we die, we will be resurrected as Jesus has promised. This is a this is the blessed hope. This is this is why we do what we do. Um, in crisis times like dealing with this COVID virus, we are seeing death all around, and we're seeing people being frantic and fearful. This is the time when we can say, you know, as a Christian, I believe that I'm living the first part of my eternal life and that even if I die, Jesus will resurrect me and he will take me to the home that he is preparing for me now. This, my friends, is the ultimate. It's really the only kind of hope that we can give as Christians. So as we go through these special beliefs that do, in some respects, set us apart as Seventh-day Adventists. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity of meeting with you on video like this, and I'm also uh, grateful for the opportunity of being in connection with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants us to be helpful in this tremendously difficult time. And this is one way that we can be doing that. And I thank you for watching. I thank you for being in contact with each other, being uh, loving, kind individuals, showing that the kingdom of heaven is here and that we can be a part of it. We can believe Jesus and we can believe him now and in the future. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I will talk with you later.